guys, Mark, aka the Nerdy Punk, uh, back with you again today for a sh short video tonight. Um, this is my first video actually as the Nerdy Punk, that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, again, apologize about the angle. I'm getting a new mount soon, my windshield mount, um, coming in in like another week or so. Get rid of this shitty one, um, and get a good one. Um, I'm at the theater right now. Um, getting ready going to see Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, so that's gonna be, this video is gonna be my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, so yeah, short video, um, I'm expecting decent to good things. Uh, I've heard some mediocre things about it, some really good things about it, so I'm interested to see my take on it. Um, and I'm interested to see, there's been so many good Marvel films this year, Black Panther, um, Infinity War, of course, even if you could lump Deadpool in there. Um, I know it's owned by Fox, but it's still Marvel. Um, so interested to see how this one, uh, lives up to the first, like, three or four Marvel films that have came out this year. Um, should be a fun one, not nearly as serious as the, uh, other two main ones, being Black Panther and, and Infinity War. So, yeah. I enjoyed the first Ant-Man, didn't see it in theaters, interested to see Ant-Man and the Wasp, it is deserted, so I'm hoping that somebody bought to this movie so I don't have to pay to see it, um, that's the hope, it's one of, the, it's the newest release we have, um, so I'm really hoping that somebody actually bought to this film, um, but we'll see, um, Either ways, I may just pay to see it anyway, if, if they haven't bought to it. So, alright, that's it. Um, I'll see you guys in a little bit for my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay guys, so just finished seeing um, Ant-Man and the Wasp. And this film felt so much like a palate cleanser after Infinity War. And, um... And Stuckman mentioned this in his review. Chris Stuckman's one of the movie reviewers that I watch almost every movie before I go see the th at the theater. Um, and I do agree with him quite a bit. And I certainly agree with him that when I watch this film in the future, I may not be thinking that, hey, this movie came out right after Infinity War. But it felt, it felt so much like the antithesis of Infinity War. Um, Infinity War was so serious... And, um, yeah, there were a few jokes, because it was an Avengers film, there are always a few jokes, but it was a very serious tone film, um, very dark ending as well, and this is the complete opposite. This is fun, you know, funny for sure, but just like a really fun film that I didn't really take too, too seriously, and I don't think you'll enjoy it if you take it too seriously, because there were a ton of plot holes in my mind. But this felt just like a normal Marvel movie. Maybe, you know, average Marvel film. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. And uh, I could definitely see myself watching it again. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, first of all, the villain, or villains, shall I say didn't really like what was going on there. Um, they have the character of Ghost, who is presented as a villain of sorts, but that character doesn't necessarily feel like a villain. Um, it feels like a person that you could relate to, and I, I do enjoy that characteristic of villain in, in a villain, but again, it wasn't like a spot-on villain. It was more of just like a character. Um, that happened to be fighting against the good guys in the movie. Um, and then there's also the character played by Walton Goggins. Which I understood why they put that character in there. Because it produced a lot of really good action scenes. And the action sequences were awesome. Awesome. Every Ant-Man action sequence is going to be really, really good. Because you can just do so much with it. The ability to shrink uh, objects and then make them huge again, like, at any time you want. Like, that's just so freaking cool. And I don't think that will ever get old. And that has the potential to make amazing action sequences. That being said, the action sequences in the first film were better. 
Um, the train scene, if you remember the first film, the toy train scene was the best scene in that movie for me. So yeah, uh, nothing in this film topped it, but there is a car chase scene that is really, really good. Um, yeah, so what was I talking about? Walton Goggins' character. I understood why he needed to be in there to keep the movie going, but his character felt just dry, and I, I don't know if they ever explained his motivations. If they did, they didn't explain it very well, because I didn't pick up on it at all. I didn't understand why he was doing what he was doing. Um, he just seemed like a, like a standard bad guy that they had to put in the film to keep it going along. Um, so, yeah, I, I felt like it used a lot of the superhero movie tropes, the epic action sequence. Um, you know, my problem with the film is mainly that it just doesn't go as far as it should in terms of the realism, so to speak. I, I know you're never going to get realism in a superhero film. That's not what I want. But I want everything to make sense and, and everything to be explained. And it certainly wasn't. The, the idea of the quantum realm is featured heavily in this film. And it's a really interesting idea. And it's got a lot of potential, I think. This script did not do it justice. Um, they don't explain hardly anything about the quantum realm. In fact, it's kind of like a running joke in, in the film that uh, Scott Lang, aka uh, Ant-Man, doesn't understand any of the things or any of the words they're using to describe the quantum realm. They, they use big scientific words that, I didn't under, that the viewer is not supposed to understand, that Scott Lang doesn't understand, and they make a joke of that. But they never really explained anything about the quantum realm. They don't explain how it works. Um, and it was kind of just like a magic trick. They could use that to explain whatever needed to be explained in the film. Um, and I felt like that's kind of just lazy writing. <laughs> um, I, I Yeah. Overall, I enjoyed the film. I don't want anybody to think that I hated it or anything. I really enjoyed the film. I'm going to buy it on Blu-ray. I, I definitely think it was a fun watch. I, I just, you know, it wasn't nearly as good as it could have been or as many other comic book films have been this year. Uh, there's been so many great ones. It's hard for this to live up to a lot of the great ones that came out this year. And um, it really doesn't <laughs> compete for me. There is an in, There's two end credit scenes. The last one, I don't recommend staying to watch because... It's just like a 30 second clip and it's it doesn't have anything to do with anything in the future. It's just like a funny little clip. And in fact, I was working the other day and uh, there was one guy who stayed for that last scene. As he was walking out, I was getting ready to clean the theater. As he was walking out, he told me, it's like, yeah, I don't I don't think it was worth staying the extra eight minutes to watch that scene. Um, and it is, it's like eight minutes of credits that you have to sit through to watch that one scene that really isn't important. That being said, the first end credit scene, the, the, the scene that comes in between the kind of animated credits and then the standard black and white text credits, that scene you need to watch. Um, you really need to watch it because this film is set in between Civil War, Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. So even though it came out after Infinity War, it's set in between the two. So you need to watch that scene because it mentions some stuff about Infinity War. And it kind of pissed me off, <laughs> the explanation they used. Basically, it's why Ant-Man was not in Infinity War. And again, it was kind of frustrating. <laughs> and uh, I talked to a couple of my friends earlier that saw it last weekend when it came out. It was very frustrating for them, too. Um, it, it was just, it just felt like a cop-out. And I'm not going to tell you anything about it other than that. I mean, that may be a little bit of a spoiler, I don't know. But, yeah, you have to watch that in credit scene. The other one, don't waste your time. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's going to wrap up this video. I'm going to give Ant-Man and the Wasp a 3 out of 5. Uh, I think it's better than average. Not amazing. Um, if anybody asks me, like, 
if anybody came into the theater while I was working and asked me, like, was it a good movie, I would say, yeah, it was good, because it was really enjoyable, and, um, yeah, it, it just, it could have been better, um, but yeah, I would always say it was really good, because, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy this film, and I don't want, you know, to, to, um, damper anyone's expectations or anything, so anyway, that's, that's it for this video, um, my first video as the Nerdy Punk, my new, uh, channel name, which uh, I'm still getting used to. I hope you enjoyed the intro I put at the beginning of this video. Um, so yeah, with that being said, uh, in, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like. Hit that subscribe button down below to stay tuned for all my future content. Uh, go ahead and comment your thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Did you enjoy it? Have you not seen it yet? Are you going to see it in theaters? Um, so yeah, go ahead and comment down below. And have an amazing night. Bye.